Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event. Let's get ready to rumble! Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel, Leilani of Barbados. Well, I've been waiting for a really long time to go in on Ms. Tessa Dunlop. And guess what? I think today's the day. Yes. We've gone from the, uh, the, uh, the rich diversity of the Abbey to a terribly white balcony. I'm <laughs> very struck by yes. that. As you can see there, the other co-hosts are stunlocked. Adjoa, Adjo, Adjo Ando is lost in her own sauce at this point. You see, because Adjo Ando acts on this series, this Netflix series called Bridgerton, which is a sort of make-believe pantomime where the premise is that black people dress up in fancy dress and wigs and pretend that they were part of the royal family. Now, UK regulator Ofcom confirmed to the Post on Thursday that there have already been 4,165 complaints about her remarks, making it the most complained about moment of 2023. Okay, this is just a case of the lines between reality and fiction are completely blurred for her. Please direct your attention to Exhibit A. This is Buckingham Palace Balcony. This is a movie set of Bridgerton. One is real, one is fake. Actresses, when they are interviewed, will talk about their character in third person. I think that if somebody interviewed Adjoa, she would be like, well, I like to have garden parties in the palace. And what I do in Bridgerton, Bridgerton's a lovely neighborhood, by the way, where I live. And it's beautiful. And we have a lot of fun there. And she would talk about the character in first person. I think she's lost. Because when she looked up at that balcony, she thought it should be out of the set of Bridgerton. Somehow she thought it was going to be full of people of color with wigs on and costumes. And I know she's off with the fairies because she didn't even really apologize for it. What she said was, I think I upset a few people. She conceded, according to the Telegraph. I was talking about the day and how marvelous it was. And then looking at the balcony at the end and suddenly went, oh, it's so white because the day had been so mixed. I didn't mean to upset anybody. She's basically saying, why are you out there in world or whatever you call it, earth? Stupid names. Yeah. <laughs> Where I live in Bridgerton, Netflix, postcode 12345. Okay. We have mixed race and colored balconies, darling. Yeah. So I'm sorry, but I didn't know that you, what do you call yourselves? English people? Ha! Huh! Bridgertonians like me. We don't know. We don't know about white people. I'm sorry. Yeah. And then they bring in a big tortoise like the ones in Mustique. I think I'm dressed very Mustique today, by the way. But anyway, they bring in a big tortoise with a lead and she jumps on it. She holds it with one hand and then she just gets taken off by tortoise back. No, I'm serious. That is really how that should have all played out. So I'm not really that angry with her. I want to address Tessa Dunlop, though. Are you ready? Okay, let's go. So Tessa gets up on this show with Pierce Morgan, and she brings her token black with her. And I'm not going to go into the whole interview, but I wanted to pick out two parts of it mainly. First of all, the token black talks a lot of crap about... You know, they should have dug up some people from Queen Victoria's time, carted their bones out there and be like, okay, now we have the black people in Queen Victoria's time. She talks about Indian princesses and that somehow there are some descendants of those people too out there in England that you, they should do genetic testing by 23andMe and figure out which of them are related to the royal family and then put them on the balcony as well. And she just goes on on a psychotic rant and like nobody really listens to her seriously. This lady is also obviously a victim of Bridgerton. And so I would like to direct her attention to my love lovely picture here where you can see on the left are all working royals titled people and on the right you have actresses and dogs also actors and you have a bowl of fruit one is reality one is fiction oh but before i leave her to one side as we say in the caribbean she also had the nerve to ask this question where is megan where are her where children is megan? <laughs> where is Dor i disregarded her but then you come to tessa and that's where pierce morgan asks her what she thought of adjo's comments and Tessa responds like this. Adjo actually goes to my local church and she's a seriously good egg and I She's a seriously good egg. That was 
completely unnecessary. Tessa Dunlop do not like black people. A good egg? That's what you say about some boys around the neighborhood causing trouble. There's a good egg and they're bad eggs. Some youth, you know what I mean? You do not talk. This woman, although she lives in Bridgerton and does not know that she, she's in the real world, she does have a job. She has, she's a working actress who auditioned and got a role and is working. Not like you, Tessa. You're grifting. You're a- we're going to get to her grifting and how she shills old people and the elderly abuse that she does. But anyway, we're going to get into that. But what I'm saying is that this woman can have some respect from the likes of you, please. Thank you. A good egg? Who are you talking about? I, I think I, I, that turned my stomach. At that point, the, the black token black that she brought with her there should have felt like running away, running off. She should have been like, a, jo- a Joja, bring your tortoise here, please. I just, I, I, I need a ride. I have to get out of here. The other thing that happens that was very interesting during this interview. Let so, me ask I- you a question. You got married, right? Yes. In your wedding snaps, how many non-white people are there? And she says... Um, it was a state occasion. Uh, it was not uh, a personal question. wedding. And that's where I think Pierce should have gone into, look, the only way that we as commoners and regular folk can relate to a coronation, because like that doesn't happen in our lives. We don't get crowned with a crown, unless you're me and you're Miss Barbados. Of course, of course, of course. No, but seriously, he's trying to, he should have said, I am relating to you as a commoner. The closest thing you have is a wedding. And I'm asking you if on that occasion of your life, a very momentous occasion, if you went around seeking out people of color to put in the photo just for the case of, uh, for the sake of diversity. And then she answers this. They were all Romanian because I got married to a Romanian. I want to suggest so they're all that the Tongan... You see, that's where she's not very clever. Because if she was very quick on her feet, she should have said, yes, I actually did have people of color in my wedding because I married a Romanian. And they consider themselves POCs or people of color. Some of them do. Listen, she could have said he was a Romani gypsy. I don't know. That's what she should have said at the time just to like block the argument and she would have won that. But no, she didn't want to identify her husband as a gypsy, of course. So just to let you know, I'm not going to cover the rest of the interview. It was just a lot of rambling about reparations and slavery and who's responsible for it and blah, blah, blah. Pierce Morgan says that's another show. All right. That's another debate. And by the way, we will have that debate because that is a nonsense too. I would like to be in that debate. Please, I am prepared. If you would just let me come up there and talk my talk. (laughs) Of course, there's no reparations. Yeah, there's none. There's nobody here that is responsible for slavery or being a slave even. Nobody. It was a time, and that was a time that people did slavery. It just so happens that in the senior members of our royal family, they are white people, which last time I checked in this country is not illegal. You are allowed to be white. As they're rambling on and on, it just struck me. I was like, isn't she supposed to be in court? Because she looks so much like that lady that's suing Donald Trump for like grabbing her by the or whatever. Why is she in this conversation? She, she, she has a bigger matters at hand. I am not kidding. I was like, I wonder if it's the same woman that's suing Donald Trump. But then I looked and I was like, no, it's not, because that woman's called Jean Carroll. So <laughs> they look the same. I'm sorry. At the same time, I was reading the comments and I was trying to find this comment back for you that I read, which said something about Tessa Dunlop. Her husband was somebody she met when he was 12. So I decided to look it up. And actually, she herself has written about this thing, self-reported herself as a groomer. (laughs) Okay. And let me tell you, it's right here. She asked herself, how could it be that I felt so strongly about someone so young and so unobtainable? Well, girl, that's a life checking moment. She goes on to say in this article that basically her husband, who was then 12 and she was 19 as a teacher in Romania, she was given all of this attention and people thought she was extraordinary, special, whatever, because she was English and that's how people saw her. So she had that upper hand power over her students. And the 12 year old boy, this was the first English person he had ever met. And instead of being all enthralled by her, which is what she was used to, he was very aloof and not interested in her. In fact, she wanted him to join her class because she was so struck by him and felt so guilty about me. Look, can I get to the, can I get to the point? Yeah, there is a serious issue of trafficking of Romanian girls right now 
and they get taken and they get promised the land of milk and honey and all of these things and they never see their family again. And this is not in a what about ism or anything. This is actually what is happening. So how is this okay for her to write about going to Romania and taking a child? Look, she says her the brother his older brother who was 22 which is much more her age group was like please leave my brother alone my little brother he's not interested he's not he's not going to come to the language class please stop please stop he tried to protect his younger brother somehow she got him into the class though and and he was so amazing his language skills he just outshone all the adults that she was supposed to be interacting with and teaching because they probably didn't give her a psychological test to see if she should really be around children because had they done that yeah, she would not have been able to recruit anybody. No, I'm, I, I don't have time for her today. I don't have time to be nice today. So she does say, for legal reasons, that she met back up with him when he was 17. And of course, as we know in England, that is of age. And that's her article on that. She is self-reporting that she's a groomer and possibly a trafficker of the S kind. Has his family seen him ever again? Does she have his passport? But I'm going to move on from that because I decided to go further investigating this crazy woman. And I went into her Instagram and what I found there was really quite disturbing. Her Instagram is full of virtue signaling. It's very snarky. Why is she so? Why is she stay so? As in, why is she like this? She is a horrible personality. She's extremely snarky. She's patronizing of heroes. She tokenizes everybody. And there is some stolen valor that she's also doing when it comes to the war heroes and stuff like that. So the first thing is she breaks her legs while running from the police who are trying to capture her for sex trafficking in the United Kingdom. No, I'm just kidding. She breaks her leg though. And she says, this nurse was my fave nurse. Gave her a copy of Elizabeth and Philip. So she's a royalist now. Why is she talking about educating this woman who saved your leg? She saved your leg. Why do you have to say that you gave her something and enlightened her? Give her her props. Put her up on a pedestal and done. Nope, she has to do it that way. And I am telling you, it's not my fault. I know that she has books that she's writing about the girl's army, which by the way, I think is a very patronizing name as it is. The girl's army, when we're talking about World War II <laughs> veterans that are women, which is very special. Anyway, you're going to see here on this Instagram that she is completely patronizing of them, tokenizing of them, and even fetishizing of them at times. She makes them dress up. She dresses up in their clothes and then says things like, I don't know what this is made of, but <laughs> I'm wearing it nonetheless. She puts up this picture and it says, fully appreciate, I'm incredibly lucky. It is luck that beep arrived in my life in the nick of time. We need to do more, much more to support women of fertile age. I, I, I don't think, who's she talking about? But then right below that, she says, World War II army girl had no children or grandchildren. At 99, most of her original friends and family were dead. She keeps being like, I'm so lucky, but these people aren't. And I went through this for like two hours, okay? So just take my word for it. And a lot of the people that she interviews for her books, by the way, they don't have any kinfolk. They don't have any family and they don't have any friends. And guess what? She doesn't have to pay them royalties for very long if she even is paying them because they're on their way out. Let's get real. So this is my advice to you. Even if you disagree that she should be doing the Lord's work by putting these women in books, she's making money off of them. And here's my advice. If anybody like her comes to you and says, I want your ancestors' relatives' story, I want to talk to them, get you an IP lawyer, an intellectual property lawyer, and make her sign her life away before they talk to your relatives. Because believe me, she's making coin off of them. And she's putting it under this farce of, I just want to big up all the heroines and whatever. No. Let me see the contract. How much are you paying them? In fact, just write the books on your family yourself, dude. Don't let a grifter, a scammer like her just come around and just take your, your family up and, 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 and make money off of them. I'm very sorry. This is a disgusting woman. Anyway, just put down in the comments whatever you think about that. And just as icing on the cake, one of her worst Instagram posts is when she's sitting with this monk in Moldova. And she's like, when in Moldova, a monk is the essential in, uh, accessory. I was thinking ingredient. <laughs> 
because I, she could be a cannibal. I don't know. You cannot have people as commodities. People are not accessories. It's a monk. Is the essential accessory a monk? <laughs> she she's an ass or she's a troll i'm not sure which one it is but it's not a good look whatever it is especially as a woman it's very upsetting i'll do another video about the prince's trust i had a comment that asked me to talk about that so i will be talking about that in my next video for you because she asked me for some certain things and i have got them for her okay thank you very much for watching me i love you all so much and i'll see you in the next one <laughs> i hope i didn't go too hard i'm sorry <laughs> I am sorry if I upset anyone, but in Bridgerton, that's how we tell a bitch off. <laughs> Love you all so much. Bye! Okay, so I was looking for some other royal families that Aja would be happy with, and I found this one, but this one looks terribly estrogen. This one looks terribly testosterone. And then look, it's perfect, Goldilocks. Where is his white mother? She's supposed to be there. And then you say, well, she doesn't live in the White House. But there you go. It's terribly, terribly all kinds of things. <laughs> Love you. Don't forget to subscribe and press the bell notifications. Then like the video if you did like it as well. Mm -hmm.